Hey, we are on the doorstep of A Day. That's right, Jordan Hare Stadium. We get to see football inside Jordan Hare Stadium. And that's the headline. That's the key ingredient. We're going to talk about it today on a brand new Village Vice. See, Zach Blackerby. I'm Brad Law. And uh, fun time of year, Zach. That is kind of the like, if you look on any uh, food item or beverage item, the number one ingredient listed is is kind of the headliner. It's the thing that's in it most. And the headline for this A-Day game is not see what the football team will look like in 2024. It's we get football in Jordan-Hare Stadium. Yeah, because this version of the 2024 Auburn football team isn't going to be what takes the field this fall, yeah. which I think is a good thing. I think I think Auburn fans are going to be excited <laughs> about that. But, you know, the, the two big questions for me all throughout spring are the big questions leading into A-Day. And it's kind of it kind of stinks because I don't think those questions can really be answered one way or the other based off of A Day. And it's the passing game, which encompasses quarterback play, wide receiver play, pass protection, and scheme, right? New offense. What does this new offense look like with Hugh Freeze and, and Derek Nix mm -hmm. at the helm? Ken Austin, you know, the quarterback's coach, who's gonna have a larger role in this offense. Then the other question is the defensive line. What does that look like as far as them stopping the run? What does it look like as far as them generating a pass rush? Is there going to be any sort of force or pressure generated by somebody not Jalen McLeod? Those are the two biggest questions. And, and regardless of what happens on Saturday, those will still be the two biggest questions as Auburn goes into the true chunk of the offseason. Well, and that's when you talk about expectations, again, to, to go back to it, Hugh Freeze has not made any bones about what he thinks about spring games and the challenge of making it competitive. We had him on Tiger Talk last night, and he said, you know, Missouri went to two-hand touch, and some teams are doing punt, pass, and kick like the like the Pro Bowl. They're gonna they're still like it's a challenge for them to try to find a way to make it a competitive game, but not show much. And that's why I like to look for the athleticism of the players, the building blocks of these guys athletically. It's one thing when you see, especially the freshmen, Zach, when this highly touted recruiting class, when you see them in their high school jersey against their high school competition and they're out of this world, they're clearly on a different level. That's one thing, and that's exciting. And Saturday, we'll get to see them in the orange and blue. We see them playing alongside and against guys who are the same size and speed athleticism of the guys they'll be playing against starting in the fall. So that's exciting for me. And that's kind of what I look for more than how many tackles does this guy have or how many catches does this guy have or yeah. yards per carry? How many times do they run? How many times do they throw? Let me let me look at the building blocks of, the, of these players and how they look out there on the field. Yeah, and A-Day to me is way more about eye tests than mm -hmm. than stats. You know, if, if somebody burst onto the scenes and they've got, you know, 150 yards, but it's like all of it was against the third team defense or the second team defense. And there's no way this guy cracks the rotation, which we've seen before yep. more so from running backs, I think from other than other positions, but a day is all about the eye test. And to me, I, I think that's a great thing that you say the athleticism mm -hmm. of the freshman, because that's not going to show up in a stat sheet or a box score. You're going to have to watch and, and kind of make that assumption and assessment for yourself. That's why I think the most important thing in all these spring games, assuming they're going full speed or as close as you can to full speed in the given situation is, is what happens in the trenches, mm -hmm. defensive line, the offensive line, you know, how quick is the first step with some of these defensive backs that are so young? You know, things that aren't stats, they don't show up. You can't really measure them, mm -hmm. but you can look and say, okay, that's that's quicker than it was at this time a year ago. Or yeah. these guys are moving guys more uh, off of the line of scrimmage than they did a year ago, not stuff that shows up in a box score, Brad, but stuff that you can see with your eyes. And if you watch a ton of football, you know, this is better than it was to that point. Let me ask you about practice earlier this week. You've seen more practice. practice. Yeah. We're talking about practice. Uh, you've seen more practice than I have this spring. Do you see more of that? Is it noticeable? Like every year, every coach is going to say, well, we're bigger, we're faster, we're stronger. For you watching practice this spring, is there a noticeable difference in that athleticism at certain spots? 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's noticeable in two different spots and in two different ways. So you you just said athleticism. Yeah. So I think the defensive backfield is more athletic than it was a year ago, which is kind of wild because you lose Jalen Simpson, who may have been the most athletic guy on the roster. Yep. A year ago. And you know, I don't know if you have a Jalen Simpson, but you've got a lot of dudes that are like a notch below him. And, and I just think that's a good looking room ranging from Keontae Scott to Jaron Thompson to Caleb Wood and to Champ Anthony to Kay and Lee and Antonio Keitzel, Bester Smith. It's a great, it's a it. great room. That's it's, that's my new favorite song, Zach. You listing off the depth in the secondary. That's that is music to my ears, and it should be music to every Auburn fan's ears. Yeah, yeah, and I didn't even say the guy that got a pick while we were there, J.C. Hart. So th there's so much. They, they're all so rangy. They're mm -hmm. all so long, and I think there's going to be growing pains because they're going to start a lot of these guys. Sylvester Smith may be starting. Yeah. Sylvester Smith may be starting. I want to say I called that like two months ago when people told me I was wrong. Just saying, Sylvester Smith is him. He's got that dog in him. But from an athletic standpoint athleticism standpoint the defensive backs i think look different than a year ago which is saying something because a yeah. lot of these guys are going to be playing on sunday the guys that they just lost the other the other section or i guess the other position group is, is the offensive line i guess from an athleticism standpoint it's just different you don't think about big 300 pound dudes when you talk about athleticism mm -hmm. but like percy lewis is Avian Miller. It's like they should not be able to move the way that they do. And also just looking at him in pads and it's like, he's over 300 pounds. How does he look so lean? So I, I think, I think the offensive line, the defensive back room to me, check those boxes so far throughout yeah. spring. That's great. I mean, if, if you talk about two really critical rooms to yeah. look that way, that's yeah, that's what you're looking for. And they've already talked about maybe going and portaling a couple of guys on the defensive line because you need your D line to look that way. Don't you love that that's a verb now? I think yeah. we're just gonna portal. We're, we're gonna, gonna portal, portal the, the 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 D line room. Well, you know, 15 years ago it was process. You process guys. Now you portal guys. Mm -hmm. Shuffle them in and out of the portal. Why not both? Right. Why not? Well, true. You're gonna process and portal. So it's a, it's a it's a party. Process and portal party. Um the triple P. <laughs> it, it is. It's a new thing here on Village Vice. Um, all right. So if I could draw up my perfect, this goes back to expectations. Here's what I'd love to see. Because I don't need to see running backs, individual skills, whether they're enhanced from last year or not. I believe okay. in, in those running backs and, and what they can do, given the opportunity to, to have space to run in. All right. So I don't need a display of the running game. This is just, this isn't going to happen. But as a fan, this would delight me. Like if, if Brad puts on his fan hat, not his co-host hat or, you know, any other working capacity hat, just the fan. Have I ever seen you wear a hat before? I've worn a hat on this show. Got typically, it. Typically our Sunday reaction shows during football season. Okay. I'll spin that sucker around backwards and, and there you go. That's right. I have seen backward hat, yeah. Brad. That's right. Yeah. BHB. Okay. So wow, all the acronyms today, I, I would love, I would love to see Peyton Thorne and Cam Coleman and, um, Bryce Kane and any other healthy receiver basically just put on a passing camp against Auburn secondary. That's what I would love to see the entire a day game consist of how, yeah. how awesome would that be to see? Now that's not going to happen. And that's not the purpose of this game. But in terms of trying to take something from the spring game and apply it to the fall, that's I would love to see that because, again, the depth in the secondary and the excitement we all have over the receivers. I don't know how much we're going to see. Everybody wants to know how much they're going to see Cam Coleman in the spring game. Yeah. And Coach Freeze's comments earlier this week, a couple of different places, make me wonder just how much you're going to show off your talented freshman. Yeah, you want to give people a, an idea of what they're going to see. Mm-hmm. But you want to keep him healthy. And I don't know, how much do you want people to see before the fall gets here? That's one of my big questions for tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can speculate all, all we want, but we don't know. Yeah. And he may change his mind from the time of us recording this to, you know, yeah. he may see the weather tomorrow and think, yeah, let's, let's let him play a little bit more. It's a perfect day to throw the football around the yard. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Sure. Um, I could see, I see the argument both ways. I see the argument both ways. Let's show off what we've got. Also, let's, you know, 
keep everything under wraps, whatever. I get it. Yeah, I get it. Uh, and then like the order in which guys go in is going to be super important too. Like you mentioned Bryce Kane. Yeah. Just now the other true freshman that's here uh, in the wide receiver room. And like, is he with the ones? Does he catch passes from Peyton? Right. Or does he catch passes from Holden Gurner or Hank Brown? I, I think that will be telling to kind of see what the pecking order is mm -hmm. and all of this. And also, like, I don't know how much of the like, information we get from receivers on Saturday actually matters because if they're as banged up as Hugh Freeze says they are earlier in the week, like, yeah. they may just be playing who's available. Right. So we'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see. All right, let's do a few predictions, Brad, right. if you don't mind. Maybe some potential MVPs. Mm -hmm. Does the offense win? Which is a weird thing to say, but I guess it's technically a possibility. We'll discuss that in just a moment on Village Vice. Today's show brought to you by our friends at mybookie.ag. Can't imagine wagering anywhere else. Mybookie.ag is the best place to wager on the the NCAA tournament with what's left of it. If you want to bet that against still Alabama, going that, keep going. Yeah, is that still keep going on? Thing. It is. It's okay. still going on. I didn't know it's that. It's still going on. MLB is back. Really fun start of the season, unless you're the Mets, which is <laughs> hilarious. Uh, but yeah, check out uh, our friends at mybookie.ag. When you make your free account and make that first deposit, use promo code next round. You'll get some extra money to wager with mybookie.ag use promo code next round who could be your offensive mvp actually brad before we discuss potential mvps mm -hmm. let's discuss folks who are already mvps we had two uh we had two other folks sign up to be members of the oh. youtube channel want to give a shout out to nathan and brett would love the support yeah. Uh, that you guys continue to give and just uh, you can click the join button down below. If you're watching on YouTube, click the join button down below. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe, but please yeah. click that join button and consider supporting the channel. It really, really goes a long way. This so, is, yeah, it, this has been a tremendous venture. We appreciate those guys. Appreciate Walt and Richard as, as well. Mm -hmm. And um, we're, Again, really excited about what's to come throughout spring and summer as we work away toward the fall. So that's thank right. you guys. That's right. So potential MVPs. I always like naturally go to to running back mm -hmm. for a day offensive MVP. You could argue the best case scenario for Auburn is it's either a quarterback or a wide receiver, but historically it just doesn't really feel like it's gone that way. Yeah, that's true. Um, because in the name of keeping guys healthy, you you tend just to run the ball, especially right. in the second half. That's how, like a, you know, like a Sean Jackson gets a ton of carries and a ton of yards in the that second half. That would not half. shock me if yeah. it was Sean Jackson. Yeah. So uh, I agree. Um, I could also, well, I don't know. Could they could they use the eight A game to give Luke Deal a guy who's an unquestioned leader offensively? Um, you know, a, a bunch of cat. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. Now that my I question is why? Yeah. Why to that? You know. Yeah. But maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe not. Um, I, I can definitely see the the offensive side of the ball. I think defense is far more intriguing because I think you're going to see more guys mm -hmm. meaningful snaps defensively than throughout the course of the game. And I use air quotes saying meaningful. You don't think every snap of a day is meaningful, Brad? N no, <laughs> no, I'm supposed to no, I'm sorry. Do you want me to give you the, the polished supposed to answer? Yeah. Let's rewind that. Give me your, uh, give me your real answer. here. It, it is me. Now, look, I will say this. It is genuinely meaningful for the guys who are playing those snaps. Those guys work very hard Yes, and it's no less important to them and nor should it be. Yes. But if you're if you're talking about for the makeup of the team in 2024, yeah, I'm just giving you a hard time. You're no, totally right. You're totally right. That's why the clock runs in the fourth quarter. Isn't doesn't it kind of feel like whoever could be defensive MVP? It's whoever just gets a pick, whoever gets an interception. Maybe House is the thing. Maybe Sylvester Smith. Okay, so you're you're on the you're on the Sylvester Smith Express, the SSE. Oh, I I'm I, not only am I on it. I am the conductor of yeah. the dang thing. 
And I have right. been for months. And people are just now saying, okay, all right. Yeah. I just heard for so long, there's no way he beats out the Juco guy. And most of the time, mm -hmm. the people said Juco guy. They wouldn't even say Laquan Robinson. It's like, right. say his, if you're telling me I'm wrong, say the dude's name. And I think yeah. Laquan, I think Quan Robinson's very talented. I think he's sure. very good. I just think Sylvester Smith is incredible. And then Jaron Thompson enters the portal, comes to Auburn. And look, there's room for all three of them. But I just think Sylvester Smith is going to be better than all of them. I really yeah. do. I really do. That's just where I'm at with it. Speaking of talented young players, I'm going to tell Sylvester you. Sylvester Smith is 100%. 100% a talented young player. No question. All right. But let me give you mine now. Oh, okay. J Joe Phillips. Who? Joe Phillips. I'm just kidding. Yep. Yeah, Joe Phillips. Yep. The, the linebacker you. slash. Yeah. I, I guess I guess they moved him to, to Buck. Yeah. Um, 6'1", 250, framed to add more. They brought him out to talk to media this week, and it gave everybody else who hadn't heard him yet. I know I, I mentioned this before, yeah. like that he doesn't talk like, he doesn't speak like a, a freshman. But even what he said, like even the content of what he says, more so than the way he speaks, mm -hmm. um, should excite you. He's a mature player, a savvy player. And a guy who I just don't think is going to have a lot of trouble acclimating himself to the college game. He said yeah. that the first week he had to be taught coverages. He didn't really know that, you know, what what these complex coverages were about. But, you know, those were picked up fairly quickly. And now he's just going to play. And I think it's possible he could have a scoop and score in the game. And All that, right. like you said, you you have one play like that, and that's enough to stand out turn. Yeah, MVP yeah you probably get all the votes, right? Yeah. I wanted to look it up because I wanted to make sure I said his quote correctly. But he was asked about DJ Durkin earlier mm -hmm. this week. And he said, he's the coach I can say I wanted. Which goes back to, you know, you described your interaction with him when you guys were doing all of the, the interviews for, for signing day. Yep. And you talked about how business-like he was, how professional he was. He sat down, this is a, this is a business decision because he knows he can get to the league. And him saying, okay, DJ Durkin, like, this is the guy I wanted. DJ Durkin can get me there. Yeah. I love it. And like, you can say what you want about Durkin, but he's been really good with linebackers. Everywhere yeah. he's been, he's been really good with linebackers. And we'll see specifically how they use Joe Phillips. And I'll lump Jamonta Waller into this as, as well. Yeah. Because it seems like they've both played at Buck and linebacker this spring. And will we see them do both of those things during a day? Will they both just do one thing during a day? Yeah. I don't know. But to me, like Joe Phillips and Jamonta Waller are both interesting watches for Saturday because of that. It's like, how are they going to use them? Yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's exciting to think about seeing. That's why I go back to one of the original points is look at the athleticism. Look at the speed. Look at the way they match up one-on-one -on -one with you. I don't think you're going to see a lot of exotic blitzes and twists and stunts, and I don't think it gets crazy. Um, and so because of that, in your base defenses, you just one-on-one -on -one matchups. And how do guys look in those one-on-one -on -one matchups? Yeah. Um, that's – yeah, that's kind of number and, one. And I want to see that too. Yeah, and I think I bet the coaches do as well. I mean, because the assumption is the scheme is going to help you in the season, mm -hmm. but at some point you've got to consistently win one on one matchups. And can yeah. somebody other than Jalen McLeod do that? Keldrick Falk, it's your time. Mm -hmm. This team needs you. Uh, Jason Jones, this team needs you. Carter, this Walker. team needs you. Zakevius Walker, Gage Keys. Yeah. The, the list goes on. Somebody up front, take a step up. Take yeah. a step up. Or one of these young guys could possibly do it. Joe Phillips or um, Amaris Williams or TJ Lindsay, Malik Blockton. So it's going to be an important position to watch. No yeah. question about it. Brad, I think that about does it for today's show. It does. Hope everybody enjoys uh, the eight-day weekend. Uh, come out to baseball, too, if you can. Big, yeah. big, big Huge. series Huge. against Tennessee. Big opportunity to kind of – you know, it doesn't totally change the math in one weekend, but you can kind of get it going in the right direction. And uh, so, yeah, hope to see you there too. Uh, remember, until next time, everybody has vices. Make sure Village Vice is one of yours. Mm -hmm.